The state of Palestine has been under um, Israeli occupation, right? I mean, that's the occupation of Palestine. That's when the ethnic cleansing happened and the Nakba and all of that, right? Well, mm, not really accurate. So let me explain. You know, there was something called the Bronze Age Collapse. The Bronze Age was one of those magical moments in history. It's very similar to how we live our lives at the 21st century. You know, people were trading globally and we were importing a bunch of stuff. And the country that is today, um, Lebanon, those people were, you know, traveling by sheep and doing a lot of like import and export kind of stuff. And people were like ordering stuff from Amazon, you know. Uh, all of that. Uh, and at the end of the Bronze Age, something really weird happened in the state that you can either call Israel, Palestine, Canaan, whatever name you want to use. Um, the thing that happened was basically that the local people started straying away from the faith that was very common there. The faith of in gods such as Baal, Asherah, Anat shamash or shapash all those gods that created the faith of all the nations around and they decided to separate themselves from the other people by starting to believe in all in worshiping only one god they were not monotheistic at the beginning they were henotheistic which means that they started only worshiping one god the storm god so that was happening and slowly slowly a new kind of peoples was formed and some of them called themselves israelites and some of them called themselves judeans but essentially they kind of had the same culture same rules and same regulations and same practices of worship and those people were exiled um, the thing about exile is that normally when empire would come and conquer a smaller country they would, you know, exile only the elites. So like the, the priests, they were all together with like the whole administrative people, they were all exiled. But like, you know, the normal people, the farmers, the agriculture kind of people, the people that had sheep and lambs and stuff like that, they weren't exiled. They stayed where they are. Um, so actually, uh, the Israelites... Um, still kept their faith this in the same way that they always have. Uh, you can find them until today living in Nablus in the Palestinian territories and also living in the Israeli territories. And they're actually the only people that have both Israeli and Palestinian citizenship naturally. Uh, moving forward, so uh, some parts who weren't exiled ended up in like the Babylonian Empire. And they came back and they were like, we're establishing like a new temple and now we're not going to be henotheistic. We're not going to believe that there are many gods, but only one god could be worshipped. But we're going to be monotheistic and we're going to believe that only one god could be worshipped. Now, other than the elites, the normal people didn't really care. Like, you know, they continued worshipping their little figurines, acting like Asherah, who is the goddess of fertility and all... She was the most beloved. Like, there are um, figurines of her all over the land of Israel. Everywhere you dig, you find <laughs> her little figurine. Um, so the normal people were just like, we don't really care what the elites decide. We, we're just going to do our own thing. So what happened later was that during a couple of hundred years later... Um, due to like a series of events that had to do with uh, the, is the Judeans fighting the uh, Greek Empire, uh, they had an alliance with the Romans, which kind of backfired. And then like the Romans were like, um, we're taking control of this region called Judea. And when they took control of the region of Judea, they again exiled only the elites. Now, this is very, very important. Um, so the exiled the elites, the regular normal people, everyday guys, uh, they were just doing their thing, not really caring. Um, and basically like later on, 
uh, the Roman Empire forced everyone that stayed in the land to become Christians. It wasn't that many people uh, that stayed here, but they basically forcefully baptized them into Christianity. And later on, during the Muslim period, they were forcefully converted to Islam. Actually, the simplest way to figure it out is just looking at Jewish people and Palestinian people. We look the same. I can't tell the difference. Unless, like, I study in a university in which we have both Israeli Jewish and Palestinian Israeli students. I cannot tell if they're Palestinian or Israeli unless they start talking. And if they speak Arabic, I know they're Palestinian. If they speak Hebrew, I know they're Jews. That's the only way I can tell the difference. We look exactly the same. I would be providing some photos of the indigenous people of this region. You could see that we just look the same. Like, you can't tell the difference. We just look identical because we're the same people and DNA checks approve that. The elites were sold as slaves all throughout the Roman Empire, which included also in Germany. And slowly, slowly, they were released out of their slavery, but they were still considered property of the country. Uh, for instance, there was a guy called the Maharam of Rutenburg, who tried to uh, leave Germany and go to Israel uh, and help other people to do it with him. Uh, we're talking about something like, uh, I think it's during the 11th century. Um, and since he was Jewish, he was considered property of the state. Uh, it was an illegal action and he was put in a cell for the rest of his life. I do encourage you to look him up. So Jews were sold all throughout um, the Roman Empire, but there were also Jews living in the area of Babylonia and places like that from all the exiles that previously happened. So there were Jews both in the Babylonian era, area and the Persian area, but also Jews like all throughout Europe. Now, what happened to the Jews in Europe was really sad because once in every few years, there would be a program and a lot of them would be raped. Um, yeah, I know, not fun. Uh, and actually, that's how you get like really lighter skinned Jews that don't look like me. You get people with like blue eyes or blonde hair stuff like that um that's actually a result of massive rapings that happened um and when you check their dna you can see that in spite the fact that they have some european you know dna in there um they're still closer to the middle east in their dna than to any other place in the world so like just Letting you know, like, if you're all racist about a Jew being blonde, you're basically accusing someone of, like, you know, looking the way they look because of, you know, SA. Anyways, so, yeah. So, all throughout the years, Jews were forbidden on going to Israel um, when it came to European countries. So, the, there weren't a lot of, like, European Jews in Israel, but you definitely had a lot of Jews from Muslim countries in Israel. My family was stuck in Central Asia for a long time. I explained about that in a different video. But we still did all that we can to come to Israel. And as I said, my people from Bukhara, which is an emirate that used to exist in Central Asia, we have our own community in Israel for hundreds of years. So, slowly, slowly, throughout time, Jews in Europe were slowly, slowly emancipated and weren't considered property anymore as, you know, people became more enlightened. Enlightened is the word. So, they became more enlightened and Jews weren't considered property anymore, but they were still treated, like, really badly. Max Nordo, who is uh, one of the people who basically thought about the idea of Zionism, uh, writes in his works about the psychological damage that is caused to Jewish people by living in the diaspora. The psychological damage of always being the minority, always looking and appearing different, and always being scrutinized and viewed like in a really negative way. Does that sound familiar? Because if you read Franz Shannon, 
who is one of the most big names in anti-colonialist thinking, he said a lot of very similar things about being African in France. First of all, I want to start with thanking you for watching the video. I know that we don't agree on many things, so I appreciate you taking the time and actually watching and listening to what I have to say. To say. Um, but let's talk about what I actually said and what I actually explained and not your interpretation of what I said. When I talk about elites versus non-elites, I don't talk about it in the sense that you were interpreting it. I'm not talking about true Jews and false Jews because any person who is part of the Jewish people is Jewish in my eyes. I would never refer to Palestinians as Jews because they don't identify as Jews and I respect human beings ability to say this is who I am and I'm gonna define myself in a certain way you know like I am assigned female at birth but I don't refer to myself as a woman and I do not appreciate when people call me a woman so people shouldn't you know in the same way um, I would not call Palestinians Jews because they don't identify as Jews they identify as Muslims and Christians who are Palestinian so I respect that and it's not up to me to call them something that they don't call themselves you know uh, so that's one thing secondly when I talk about elites versus non-elites I'm not talking about my perspective I'm talking about the perspective of the colonialists which in this case is empires like the Asherites empires like the Babylonians and empires like the Roman Empire I'm not talking about my own perspective I don't view people as elites versus non-elites I don't put people in such categories um, colonialist empires do and when I was explaining that uh, the Romans only um, exiled the elites I was explaining their perspective not my perspective so I don't think that a Jew that was a priest or an administrator or a rabbi or any of that was more important than just the common farmer you know not more important and not more original and not more Jewish um, I am saying that the colonialist who exiled the people did see a difference between people and did categorize them you know the same way that the roman empire differentiated between human beings and slaves do i think that there is a difference between a human being and a slave no slaves are humans and they shouldn't be enslaved point blank but the romans didn't agree with me you know because they were like a crazy empire that thrived on slavery and stuff like that so i'm not using my own terminology i'm explaining someone else's perspective like how the roman empire or the asherite empire or the babylonian empire or, or the persian empire operated when it came to the people who lived on the land of israel judea canaan palestine whatever whichever name you want to use because once more any person who has any historical connection to this piece of land is entitled to call it whatever they want. I'm not going to be labeling the country for them. If Palestinians want to call the same piece of land Palestine, I respect it. I would not argue with them and say, no, this is Israel or this is Judea. And in the same way, I don't want Palestinians to be arguing with me and saying that my homeland that I have known and my family and my ancestors have known as Israel is not Israel or not Judea, you know? The same way, so when I talk to Palestinians about Judea and Samaria, I don't call it Judea and Samaria, even though that's how Jews have referred to that area. I call it the West Bank because that's their preferred language. In the same way, I do not call Palestinians Jews because even though I know that ethnically they are Jews, um, they don't identify as Jews and they don't want to be referred to as Jews. So I'm just going to not name them that. I hope that that answers your question.